Good morning and welcome to Plymouth United Church of Christ in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in our online worship service. Whether you're with us today in worship as a member, friend, or visitor, know that you will find the welcome here. If you would like a bulletin to follow along and participate, you'll find a link to it in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube. Please join in our responsive call to worship. The prophet asks, can our soul-weary bones live again? Oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss, and grief? Oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life. And come to worship God in laughter and dancing. Please join several members of our chancel choir in singing verse 1 and 4 of our opening hymn. prayer of confession. Holy God, maker of us all. Have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, son of Mary. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life. Have mercy on us. In the community of Christ's family and in the presence of all of God's people, I confess to God that I have sinned in thought, word, and need. I have not loved God, cared for God's world, or respected God's people as I should. I own my responsibility and pray for God's pardon. May God forgive you, Christ befriend you, and the Spirit renew and change your life. Amen. In the community of Christ's family and in the presence of all of God's people, we confess to God that we have sinned in thought, word, and dead. We have not loved God, cared for God's world, or respected God's people as we should. We own our responsibility and pray for God's pardon. May God forgive you, Christ befriend you, and the Spirit renew and change your life. Amen. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Come out, Jesus calls, and his word unbinds us from the oppressive weight of our past and pushes away the rocks that close us off from love. We are made free in the spirit of God and forgiven all our sins. May God's name always be praised. Please join in our song response, Kyrie Eleison, meaning Lord have mercy.
scripture reading is from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon those slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into the feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off from completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Please join in our responsive reading of Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. O God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. And if you, O God, should mark inequities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for God. My soul waits. And in God's word, I hope. My soul waits for God more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in God. For with God, there is steadfast love. With God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. Our second scripture reading is from John chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, 17 to 27, and 38 to 44. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha, Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. With this, he said, when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind them and let him go. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Hi, my name is Nora Sullivan and I am a member of Plymouth Church. Did you know the new five-star forum in downtown Milwaukee is located on the street named Valor Phillips Avenue? I have asked people, do you know who Val Phillips is? Most people could not tell me who she is. Before this research project, I didn't even know who Val Phillips was. My mom recently learned about Val Phillips and suggested it might be a great topic for my National History Day project. After reading more about her life, I learned that she was brave and bold and her life's mission was to help other people in her community. The people of Milwaukee are lucky that Val Phillips took risks and fought racism to make the world world a better place. There are many ways Val Phillips broke barriers. In high school, she won a speech contest and was awarded a scholarship to Howard University in Washington, D.C. When she came home, she met her future husband, Dale, and together they attended the University of, the university of Wisconsin-Madison Law School. She it was the first African-American to graduate from the law school in Madison. The next barrier she broke was being elected to Milwaukee's Common Council. And she is right there. She is famous for fighting for the Fair Housing Law. She believed that people should be allowed to live wherever they wanted, no matter the color of their skin. Belle Phillips did not stop there. She was the first African-American woman judge in Wisconsin. And she also became the Secretary of State in Wisconsin. She did all this while fighting racism and sexism. Belle Phillips is remembered by the many places and statues honoring her legacy. If you have the time while in quarantine, you can watch the PBS documentary, Dream Big Dreams. Dream Big Dreams is a film about the life of Val Phillips and how she changed Milwaukee and fought for fair housing. Val Phillips often asked, "Did you? What did you do today that was good?" She did amazing things in her life, in her long life, and helped people bring out the best in themselves. Thank you, God, for Val Phillips, and may we all fight for injustice we see in our community. Please join in singing verse one and three. Precious Lord, take my hand. Oh! 
So glad that we're together in this time of worship. And we are together with God's blessing, even though there's social distancing that requires us to be meeting each other online. But I'm so thankful that we have this opportunity to join in worship. So thankful for the words from Holy Scripture that we've just received, some powerful witnesses to faith. Speaking first of Psalm 130, the power of that psalm has been evident over many centuries. Given its honest confrontation of sinfulness and humble dependence upon God's mercy and redemption, this psalm has become a favorite for many, including Martin Luther, including John Wesley, by Wesley's own account, when he heard this psalm sung on May 24th, 1738 at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, his heart was, quote, strangely warmed. And he discovered an assurance of salvation by faith that he interpreted as his call to Christian ministry. And what is really striking about this psalm is the conviction that God is somehow present in the depths of our being. This is the paradox of this prayer, since the depths represent the forces of all that oppose God, and since the psalmist's own turning away from God is at least partially responsible for the present sense of despair, the good news is that God will not so easily be rejected. God's presence and power met in every human experience, even in the depths, even on the cross, even in death, even in the midst of a pandemic. No place, no circumstance is beyond the reach of God's forgiving, loving, redeeming presence and power. And this conviction does have profound implications for understanding God and understanding ourselves as the children of God. It means that God responds to our needs. God opens God's divine self to the vulnerability of being in relationship with you and with me. God's sovereignty, therefore, cannot be an exercise of sheer force, but rather it is the power of committed love. And Jesus is not untouched or unmoved by physical and spiritual destruction. He takes fatal illness seriously and personally, as we heard in the reading from the Gospel of the death of Lazarus. Going to the tomb of his good friend Lazarus, Jesus encountered his good friends, the sisters of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. And when Jesus sees Mary weeping, he is deeply moved. He begins to weep himself. What a powerful image this is. Jesus is so overcome by grief at the destructive power of death that he weeps. Death is not a minor annoyance to Jesus. It's something that affects him so profoundly that he's overwhelmed by emotion and he cries. And just as he weeps over Lazarus, he weeps over deaths in Afghanistan or Iraq or China, or Italy, or the United States, or Wisconsin, or Milwaukee. Then another group of onlookers in the story we heard speak up and make a less than sympathetic observation. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept Lazarus alive? That sounds rather heartless and cut him. But don't dismiss it so quickly. It's a question that a great many of us ask every day. Think about it. 
Why doesn't the universe creating God create miraculous cures for little children with cancer? Why doesn't the death conquering Christ beat this coronavirus that is killing our elderly senior members? Why doesn't the apostle inspiring spirit of God give special power to first responders and nurses and doctors and medical teams who are overwhelmed by the numbers of patients that are coming to them every day. People are hungry for answers and they're scavenging for spiritual sustenance anywhere that they can find it. Martha admits that she expects a straightforward healing miracle when she says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She's confident that Jesus holds power over illness. And she believes that he would have chosen to use this power to help Lazarus. But then Jesus says something very interesting and very unexpected in that moment. Instead of explaining to Martha that he is going to raise Lazarus in just a few more minutes, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He asks the women. It's not a straightforward healing. It's a resurrection and life moment. And rather than promising Martha a miracle, he invites her to trust him to work for new life. There's a, it's a big difference between the two. Instead of saying, I'm going to step in and make everything okay, Jesus says, those who trust in me will live. And he promises that for those who trust, no death that we will ever die will be forever. And Martha, in response to this invitation, she says, yes. Yes, Lord. I trust that you are the Messiah, the one coming into the world. And that very same invitation is extended to us today. Jesus says to us, in the vortex of our physical and spiritual illnesses, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I invite you into this new life with me, he's saying. He's inviting us into a radical new life. He's inviting us right now to join a journey of unexpected surprises that leads from dying to living, from death that decays to a life that empowers. The origin of the word resurrection is the Greek word anastasis, which means standing up again. We all lie down, we all rise up. We do this every day. The same word is being used here in scripture. I am the resurrection and the life. But here's the reminder. The resurrection does not wait for Easter. It is not what you believe in your head that matters. It's how you respond with your heart and your actions. It is not believing in Christ that matters, but rather it is becoming like him. And that's the life we are being offered. Amen. As we enter into a time of prayer, Donna will share some music with us. You are welcome to use this time to reflect on any prayer concerns that you have. And if you're watching this on Facebook in the Sunday morning watch party, you're also welcome to share those concerns in the comments. Ordinarily, if we were meeting together, we would follow our prayers with an offering. And I'm just going to 
add a few words as we enter into prayer we're also entering into a time of opening up and offering ourselves Plymouth Church depends upon the leadership and the gifts and the time and the energy and the financial contributions of every member of the church family if you would like to make a donation online to Plymouth you can do so on our website Plymouth dash church dot org in our prayers for our community we especially hold the Muirhead family in our prayers as they are quarantined three out of the family have tested positive for this virus so let us bring ourselves into this privilege that is called prayer it's not a ritual that depends on closing our eyes and putting on holy faces. We don't have to kneel, you don't have to sit, you don't have to be in the sanctuary of the church. We can pray while we're walking, driving, or working. And God responds to a two-word cry for help in the middle of a busy afternoon, just like God responds to a focused prayer in times after reading scripture in the morning for our meditation. Prayer doesn't have to be complicated. God delights in any simple words we offer. Help us to trust you. We confess that we don't always believe that we can. We think we know better than you how our lives should go. It feels like you make mistakes and it's too easy to doubt that you have our best in mind and sometimes we even feel like we've been abandoned. And despite these doubts, somehow still we do ultimately trust you and cry out to you help us to see this situation that we face throughout our whole world in the light of the truth that you can be trusted remind us that we can count on you all the time every day in every way help us to know that we can trust you even when we've had a hard time trusting ourselves.
Help us to release our grip and to reach out to you. Teach us to pause and pray. And so our prayer today is that our world will know your healing touch and your forgiving heart. That those whose lives are filled with dark thoughts or unimaginable fears will find your peace. For those involved in conflicts, the innocent, the guilty, the injured, the orphaned, the widowed, politicians, healthcare teams, relief workers, may you bring comfort and compassion, sustenance and repentance and forgiveness and healing and tears and love, which is a peace that endures. Walk beside those who are close to giving up hope and where life seems to have no point, where people struggle to make ends meet. May all of your children feel the touch of a caring hand and an end to injustice and fear, and may all who weep and mourn or feel abandoned and unloved turn toward your voice move toward your arms and hear the whispers of your presence in the long hours of night. Inspire us, encourage us to bend low, to embrace those for whom society has no time or patience, and raise our eyes upward to see the struggling patient and the exhausted caregiver. And where young and old stumble and fall, may we be there to offer support, that all will know your love that transcends all others. And we pray all of this as Jesus taught us to pray to you, our Creator, our Mother, and our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be, be thy name. Thy that kingdom come, come. thy that will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction, the grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ, stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all of our tomorrows. Amen. <laughs>